Today I want to talk about the parts of a lever. <clears throat> We're also going to talk about how to diagram all three classes of levers. Uh, the first piece of a lever that you need to know is that it is a simple machine. It does make work easier. It uses uh, force to lift things. Um, it also provides us an advantage some of the time. Now not always. Sometimes a lever could provide you with a disadvantage. Um, that would be when it takes more effort to lift the load. That would be a mechanical disadvantage, though it would still potentially provide you an advantage in the direction that you are lifting the load. The parts of a lever are the lever arm, that is the beam or the stick that pivots around a point. The point that it happens to pivot around is called the fulcrum. Okay, so that's the point where the lever arm will pivot. <clears throat> the load is the mass that is trying to be moved when you use a lever arm and the effort is the force that moves the load. It's a push or a pull. So that's how much effort it takes you to lift that load. We measure effort with a spring scale and we measure it in the unit of Newtons. This is a lever diagram. It is a first class lever. It's a first class lever because when you look at it, the fulcrum here is in the center. It's between the load and the effort. Okay, It could be at any point on this lever arm so hopefully you've found that when the fulcrum is closer to the load, we get a greater advantage than when it's farther away from the load. And also when it's really close to the effort, the fulcrum, it is far more difficult or takes far more effort to lift the load. So realize that that arrangement can move. Your load could also move on the lever arm. It just needs to be on one side of the fulcrum. Okay. The arrow coming off of the load indicates the direction that the force is applied to that load, which way we're going to move it. So a load is represented with an L in the square, and the arrow indicates the direction that the load's going to move with this lever arm. Effort is indicated by an E in a circle, and the arrow indicates the direction that we're going to apply force to the effort to lift the load. So this is a diagram of a first class lever. Again, in a first class lever, the fulcrum is in the middle. The effort is applied in a downward direction. In a second class lever, you'll see that the load is in the middle and the fulcrum and the effort are on either side then. So this is a second class lever. We know it's a second class lever because the load's in the center. On a second class lever, we still apply the effort going downward. The load still is hoped to lift upward, okay? And our fulcrum is at one end. So things that might be a second class lever might be things that are like a wheelbarrow where the fulcrum is the wheel and the load then is whatever you're trying to lift with the wheelbarrow that goes in the center here. And then the effort, right, that's the handles where you would place your hands to use the wheelbarrow. So that might be an example of a second class lever. Another one might be like a paper cutter where the load would actually be the paper. You could think of the fulcrum as the um, pivot point where the blade attaches on to the base of the um, paper cutter. So, and then the effort obviously is typically where you ply your hands. So anytime you think about where I put my hands on a lever, that's probably where your effort is being applied. So this is a second class lever and how it would look diagrammed. In a third class lever, the big difference is that the effort is what is in the middle. So you'll find the effort located in the center of the, um, diagram. Okay, um, the load's on one end and the fulcrum is on an, the other end. The interesting thing about a third class lever 
Um, we use lots of them. They all make kind of a pendulum swinging type motion. So when you think about an object that you use that kind of swings and make a, makes a pendulum motion, it's probably a third class lever. There are a variety of these out there. In fact, you carry some around with you everywhere you go. Things like your arm um, or your leg would be considered a third class lever depending upon how it's used. Um, a broom might be a third class lever. Again, it makes that pendulum kind of motion, that swinging back and forth. When I say pendulum, you might think grandfather clock and the way that the um, piece moves in a grandfather clock. So you'll notice the fulcrum is on one end, effort in the middle, effort is applied down, load still moves up, Okay, um, again, just because you would turn it on its side, it doesn't change the fact that it would be a lever. And much like the first and the second class lever, uh, these items could move closer or farther from. So for example, when we have a broom, um, typically we think of the fulcrum is the pivot point, so it's all the way out there at the end where it allows to go back and forth. And that back and forth is that pendulum motion. And then when you put your hands on the broom right there, um, more towards the end of the broom so that you get that good sweep. And then the load would be whatever dirt you are trying to pick up from the floor. Um, lots of household objects fall into this third class motion, third class lever. Think about the motion that they make. Um, any of them that make that pendulum type motion would be this. So remember that when you guys come to class, you will be building and diagramming um, two first class levers, two second class levers, two third class lever, and then one of your choice. You need to remember that an L in a square it stands for the load, the F in a triangle, that stands for the fulcrum, and the E in a circle stands for the effort. So as you go to diagram them, you're going to want to draw them out as such, right? You will add your lever arm, okay? And if you were diagramming a first class lever, then you would put on your fulcrum, all right, draw that out, okay? Make sure that those get labeled neatly with the F in the center of them. Just lets us know that that's a fulcrum. As you do that, make sure you draw and write really neatly. If you don't draw neatly or write neatly, um, they can get hard to read. And then the circle for your effort, okay? Get that applied on there in your diagram. Always write the E really neat in the middle so that I don't think you're writing an F. Okay, E's and F's, those can sometimes, depending on how neat you write, look like one another. And then you always want to draw the arrow for the direction that you're gonna apply that effort. This particular case on a first class, right, effort goes in a downward direction. We pull down in order for our load to go up. And then our load is a square. Go ahead and put that L in the center for the load. And when we use a first class lever, we're trying to typically move that load in an upward direction. So we'll apply that arrow in that upward direction, okay? And when you diagram real world objects, you wanna diagram them as close to possible. So for example, a teeter-totter, which is a first class um, lever, right, would really pretty much look like this because we sit on the ends. Um, that's where the two people would be in those levers. On the other hand, a pair of scissors, which is also a first class lever, right, the effort might be at the end, right, because that's where we put our hands is in the little handles. So that part's fine, um, but the fulcrum is actually where the nut or the screw is. And so depending on your scissors and the, the length of the blade, that could be closer to the load or farther from the load. It's part of why when we put paper into our scissors, right, they cut better if it's back a little further than when it's all the way out at the tip. So this might be a diagram for a pair of scissors, okay? Um, tomorrow, again, you're going to work on building some diagrams.